I don't believe for even a second that there is not enough climate finance in this world. The problem is we don't have enough available resources because it's locked in somewhere. Financing the infrastructure that needs to be built over the next 10, 20, 30 years is huge. It's a huge financing requirement. That can only be done with the public and private sector working together. So an event like this gives the private sector the opportunity to talk about what they need and what they can do with the public sector. That's absolutely essential if we're going to hit net zero by 2050. We're hoping that business will help us to deliver the 100 billion that we committed to in 2009 and which has not yet been delivered. We're hoping that business will be the generator to enable that 4 trillion to be produced because we know at the moment we only have 630 billion. So we are way off target. And I also want us to concentrate on the small and the developing countries in the Global South in particular, who have made virtually no contribution to this climate crisis, but are disproportionately impacted by it. If you look at, at, at Africa, the whole African continent has only about 30 billion. That's absolutely in unjust and we need to turn that around but it's going to take all of us global south working hand in glove with the global north and business being the glue that helps some of this to be delivered Finance is critical if you are a small island or indeed a large ocean state and you are really living on the front line of climate change and this is about ensuring that finance is available now for some of the adaptation but actually also way upstream in terms of some of the lending rates and the ability for finance to flow to those nations. But there's actually a really big job for financial institutions to do to kind of crack open their investments and their assets to try and understand what is that doing either for good, for green if you like, and for a, a healthy, sustainable economy, or actually is perpetrating so much damage that we are seeing of our planet's resources. And one thing certainly WWF has been working on is as part of in the UK looking at transitions plans with UK Treasury. How do we get businesses to make not just an orderly transition, that's important, but actually a much more accelerated transition so we aren't facing these issues in the future. We have to figure out a way to accomplish multiple objectives in a very short period of time with a limited, at least at the moment, a limited availability of resources. Because I don't believe for even a second that there is not enough climate finance in this world. The problem is we don't have enough available resources because it's locked in somewhere. So since COP last year, we've seen a number of steps move forward for the ocean, for coral reefs. We've also seen temperatures spike this summer, witnessed a lot of mass bleaching of corals dying, driven largely by rising greenhouse gas emissions, warming oceans. But as the threats continue to mount, we're also seeing a lot more solutions come into play, more policies, funding. Uh, there's a, an entity called the Global Fund for Coral Reefs, is one example out of many, that's mobilizing $500 million to fund coral protection and restoration, along with other ecosystems. Not just funding it on their own right, but having that serve as catalytic capital that can engage hotels, new conservation finance mechanisms like coral reef insurance policies or blue bonds. And so seeing a recognition also that the ocean and nature can't be divorced from climate, how much we all rely on the ocean, how many communities rely upon healthy ecosystems. And so tying those things together is an encouraging step forward since COP and Sharm Shake last year. Institutional investors represent half of the investable capital in the world. They need to be part of the solution. But of course, most all institutional capital has fiduciary obligations. There are, we want to take risks, but there are risks that we cannot take. And blended finance brings all of us together with 
governments, with the MDBs, with the philanthropy, with family offices, with, with actually industry players, to actually all come together and do whatever we can bring to the table, bring it to the table, put it together, and that will produce the infrastructure that we need at scale and at the speed that we need to actually uh, win against climate change. For me, the greatest outcome has already happened. It was an announcement of over a billion dollars of funding from governments with involvement from the World Bank for methane solutions, and 750 million of those dollars going to the ag and waste sectors, which is something that is only a dream. It's very exciting. Historically, an event like COP has not been very powerful in, in pushing ahead innovation because there's been a lot of talk and a lot less action. But now as we transition to action because of the climate emergency, the opportunities for innovators here at COP are, are nearly endless.